Hello everyone, Isabella Ritz with Amazon Made Simple Podcast here again. And today I have a very, very special guest. We're genius speaking, I'm trying to make every single guest special. But this one, um, he is the key to the to the success of most of the clients of Ritz Momentum. He is also the key of success to the better conversion rates on Amazon for your guys' listings. He's also the very fun guy to party. And I can tell you, if you go to our events at least once, you will have a lot of fun. Almost every single time we can create a very funny, funny, funny GIFs or pictures. And uh, after Q4 event, we've been laughing all together. So Justin Chen from PeakFu, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Isabella. Yeah, thank you for being here today. And like as a high performer or G2, if you guys don't know what it is, I just find out what it is. It's the best performance based on the reviews for the software. And you can tell like he's so cool and tough that he even got a badge of 2022. <laughs> yep. Okay, Justin, tell me, uh, first of all, what's your background? And uh, from your background, how did you decide that you are going to fund the company that will help people to figure out how to pick the right picture, the right logo, just like how, how you even thought about it. Yeah, sure. So, so my background and my co-founder John's background are both in software. So we, we went to school together. We went to Berkeley together doing computer science. And so that's where we met. And so we, we first went to our, uh, you know, different corporate jobs. He went to Microsoft. I went to Hewlett Packard and we did that for a few years, but we always wanted to start something together. And so finally we decided to quit our jobs and we started a, a business and it was a web business. It was, it was actually something completely different. It was a restaurant review, uh, kind of a restaurant review site, kind of like Yelp. And, uh, we self-funded this business and we built it, uh, from scratch ourselves. And we were running that for a few years. And, the idea from PickFu actually came as a side, uh, a side business, uh, a side project out of building this bit other business because we were working on a redesign for the website. And between the two of us, we couldn't decide which way to go. And so being engineers, we decided, well, let's just, this must be a common problem. Let's build this service, like something that will give us crowdsource feedback. Um, part of the other reason was, you know, as an entrepreneur, as entrepreneurs, we were asking our friends and family all the time for feedback, like, which design do you like? Which logo do you like? And at this point, it had been a few years that we were doing this. And friends and family just, first of all, they get tired of giving you feedback. And then they just, the feedback gets worse and worse. And they're just like, oh, you know best. Like, it's your thing. And like, okay, well, you're not being helpful anymore. So uh, we decided to build our own crowdsource, uh, you know, feedback platform. And that's where PickFu came from. So we wanted something that would uh, pick for you, like, as, as quickly and easily as possible. So we threw this up on the side for a, quite a while, and it wasn't geared towards e-commerce or anything. It was just for any entrepreneur. Um, and yeah, we, we saw a lot of people using it for logos, book covers, book titles, kind of all kinds of different things, anything digitally creative that you needed feedback on. Um, and then e-commerce kind of discovered us. Uh, you know, we, we popped up on the uh, AMPM podcast. Uh, Manny mentioned it uh, a few years ago, and we started getting all these Amazon sellers testing different aspects of their product and main images. And so then we discovered uh, this whole industry and just, you know, and we found that it, it works really well because it, it helps you make decisions and um, minimize risk and just get a higher return on all your uh, important decisions. So uh, we, we've doubled down and uh, really embraced the e-commerce industry and um, started adjusting the product to um, help them even more specifically around, you know, improving their, their product concepts or their main images or their branding, any of those things. So that's, yeah, that's where it takes us now. Today. That sounds cool. It, it, you know, the best, the best niche is being born is based on the like avatar pain and you've been yeah. your personal avatar and like, okay, so I have a pain. <laughs> I have to create the business because it's a pain and it's a real, real helpful pain because uh, like we're working with our clients and we're using big phone on a daily basis. Yeah. And like, we don't have to go like somewhere pretty far away. Like yesterday or, or day, yeah, I think yesterday we've been testing uh, the logo for one of our clients, guys. 
and we've been testing the logo four times to win and we won a, the brand new logo against competitor who is pushing three hundred thousand dollars just for one listing so this competitor is huge and like the new brand we're creating right now uh is a winner based, based on the logo already like right now awesome. before we're even like launching something so pick four is a great tool to like, if you're going every single step like to spend 50 hold on yeah 50 bucks per yeah poll you can save yourself like dozens tens of thousands of dollars and you can make hundred thousands of dollars that's just because your product is more successful your picture is more successful conversion rate is higher etc but i will let you talk about it so let's say I don't know anything about Pickful and see you the first time. Yeah. And uh, I'm just looking at your platform. What opportunities do I have with the platform? What can I test? What I cannot test? And who are those people who are testing, who are actually answering the questions? Sure. Yeah. So you should think of Pickful as like a digital focus group where you want to, uh, to get feedback from your target audience. And so maybe those are just the general audience. Maybe it's women or, or men uh, or people of a certain age. And so as you're, as you're developing things, maybe it's your logo or you're trying to get feedback on your main image, what you can do is you can put those um, ideas or assets up on PicFu and ask a single question. And so we try to make the whole process very simple. Like you're not constructing this long survey. It's, you know, which logo do you like? Which product would you buy? Something very simple put up a few options. And what happens is we tap into a panel of respondents that we've curated um, and we pay them a small stipend to answer these questions. So they'll pick what they like and they'll give a written explanation why and they'll also give demographic information. So all this information comes together and gives you not only uh, actionable information on which one won, but also uh, reasons why they chose that so you actually have things that you can take uh, take action on so maybe they don't like the color or maybe they don't like the design or the wording and that's something that you can take and improve on your next version of it and so what we're trying to do is uh, provide crowdsource feedback like on tap and it's very fast so like all of these polls take 15 30 minutes um, for a general audience maybe a bit longer if you do something targeted but the the intent is that anyone can run these polls and anyone can do it at any time to, to iterate within the same day. Um, I think one of the things that we discovered was, you know, even larger companies that have, you know, like a Coca-Cola or, you know, like these large CPG brands, they have consumer insight teams, right? That will run these large, you know, large uh, focus groups or consumer research uh, surveys. And, you know, they have these advantages um, of, of being a large company. And we're trying to bring that down to like every seller, right? Like, now you have like, you can be your own consumer insights groups. What's even more interesting is that a lot of those large companies are starting to use PicFu as well, because while they do have those resources, this enables anyone, maybe it's a digital marketer, maybe it's a social media manager, maybe it's like the, the product designer to run these micro tests on all the different decisions that they're making throughout the day and not just on like the final product, which I think is where typically consumer research is done is like, oh, okay, we're going to launch this new, you know, Coke or something like that. And like, we're going to, you know, go to this, uh, conduct this $50,000 focus group and like get all this feedback, but well, could you have micro tested a lot of those decisions along the way so that you have a higher chance of success when you finally get to that end point? That all makes sense. And I remember when we spoke the last time, you also said that you guys created, uh, it's a click test. It's called click test, right? Yeah. Because what I was complaining, like, Justin, we need to take a look how our listing is actually performing sure. and uh, up front before we'll get on page one. And you said, we actually have it already. So can you explain what it is and how we can test something that we do not have yet on a page one? Yeah. But we want it to be, we want to see how it's going to perform on the page one. Yeah. So there's a couple of ways you could do it on PicFu. Um so we do have a thing called a click test where you can you can take an, any any kind of image and for example maybe you take a screenshot of search results and you want to ask like click on click on the listing that your draws your attention if you're if you're searching to buy a certain product and so that's one way you could do it and and you, you'll actually get like a heat map of like where people click. The other way to do it is we have this Amazon mock-up tool where 
you can actually put in um, ASINs or search terms to grab live data from Amazon. And what we're going to do is we're going to render a uh, kind of like a hypothetical theoretical search result um, listing that you can use to test uh, your listing against your competitors. And even if you don't have a listing yet, you can actually just upload like the image that you might be using. So maybe it's a 3D render or something your designer made, the title you might be using, the price that you're going to use. Um, and then you could change uh, all the ratings and number of reviews to you know, what you hypothetically might be going out with. Or maybe you want to normalize them all so it's like an even playing field. So this is a really interesting way to, um, to kind of test in a, a sandbox how you might be competing on a new product or a change to one of your products, right? So maybe maybe you're going to do a, a redesign or a rebrand and you want to see like, hey, am I going to be more competitive with this new product design against like, you know, people selling teapots? Or maybe you want to sell teapots and you're like, all right, well, I need to beat these three guys. Am I going to be able to do it with the design that I have and the packaging and the price that I think I can go out, go at it? And um, it's a very interesting way to... Uh, to gauge potential success before you're sinking a lot of money into that, that new product or that redesign. That's amazing. Um, do you know, I mean, of course, you know, do you want to give some piece of advice of the main mistakes that people are doing, people are making when they're creating the polls? Uh, and just like based on my personal feedback from the clients who are coming to us, they're like, okay, I'm going to run the pool. And then I'm like, okay, good for you. And I'm waiting. I'm like, I'm waiting till they will ask me the next question. They're like, uh, what should I ask? Hmm. And here, genuinely speaking, the mistake starts. So what would you advise? What would you recommend? What are the best tips to use the PicFu? Because PicFu is great as long as you are using it right. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say to uh, start simple with the question. Uh, so... I think some people don't know what to ask. So I would start, you know, start with an easy question. Like which, which product do you like? Which product would you buy? Um, as you get more advanced or more comfortable with it, you can start adding a little bit more context, but not asking more questions, right? You always want to ask a single question so that people know what to focus on. So for example, you might say when you're searching for a teapot on Amazon, like which product would you click on? Right. That's, that's pretty specific but it gives a little bit of context to put people in the right mindset. But I'm not asking two questions. I'm not saying, you know, which one would you click on and, you know, some, some follow-up question in it, because then it's going to confuse people. So um, I would say, keep it simple. Um, and we, we're always happy to help. Like, I, I know that uh, you have your customers which you're able to guide them, um, but you, we also have a live chat. So like, if there's any indecision, you can always write in. And we're happy to give you feedback on it. Justin, I don't know what to ask my people. <laughs> you exactly. <have> yeah. <laughs> we, we have a lot more templates now. We actually launched an, a, a change to our, our um, whole building experience where we have all these combos and, and pre-built templated questions so that people can have at least something to start with. Because like, I know, you know, it's a, it's a common, common feedback to us as well that like, I don't know what to ask. So by default, I would say just, if you were going to go to a, a person or a coffee shop and, and try to get feedback on something, like what is the simplest question that you would ask someone to get feedback? And a lot of times, like, which one would you prefer? You could start with that and then just kind of like get more specific with it. Uh, do you have any recommendations of the presentation of the actual product or picture or whatever we test against competitor? Uh, you mean best practices for the image or just like the best practices of the presentation of the picture when you are testing it against the computer makes sense so for example i'm testing my pen yep. against computer pen but my pen is laying down on a white background on a table and the computer computer's uh, pen is inside of the very pretty organizer uh desk organizer and of course we we can imagine which one is going to be a winner mm -hmm. even without looking at the picture. So do you have any best practices, like best tips here? I think that's hard because I think it's very product specific. Um, and so this is where we, we, we see a lot of uh, different approaches, but it you still have to test it, right? Because it, it, 
you know, different industries, different product types. We definitely see a lot of best practices around, um, use, you know, ma obviously maximizing the amount of space in the image. Like a lot of times you see something that's like way too small and there's all this white space and that's just kind of a waste. So it's not zoomed in enough showing all the, you should definitely show everything that's included. Um, a lot of times people have things that are included in the, uh, the packaging, like accessories or all these things. And, and they're not showing that, um, laying it out in a very organized manner. We've seen this to be, uh, to perform almost always better than a creative version. So like, maybe you think like, oh, fanning it out looks really cool. But then a lot of times what performs better is just like kind of laying it out in the grid so that everyone can see like as much of it as possible. A lot of times when you fan it, like you can't see every piece of it. And so that's something that, uh, you know, designers might make, make a mistake. We're like, oh, this looks really cool. And it's like, well, it does look cool, but that's not going to perform better, right? If you, we all see the Amazon images and they're typically like very laid out, laid out very clearly and uh, systematic um, product packaging. If you, if you spend any time on good product packaging, you should include it because it really helps um, show what people are going to get. And a lot of times you're able to um, show more information in the image because like your packaging will typically say things that, you know, you're not allowed to say like, on the image, but like your packaging can say it, right? So like Correct. That, Correct. that's a great trick, right? Like get that stuff on your packaging so that when you put it in the image, like it's like, oh, it's a six pack or has these benefits and you didn't add that to the image. That's just the packaging, right? So like that, that's an easy win. Yeah, that's correct. We'll have to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I will add here. So when we do the big four polls and if we want to make the actual fair decision from the audience mm -hmm. and we want to ha get this fair decision from the audience we are adapting our picture to the picture of the competitor so for example if they have a pen and the organizer yeah and the desk organizer we're using our like we're taking their desk organizer we put our pen inside mm. and then we're testing That's them cool. against each other in a very similar way so generally speaking the people they they can see the same presentation but yep. the different products and then it's easier to win because we understand that this client this competitor will not go anywhere with his picture with his main picture and this is that hel that helps us to improve our main picture in the future but mm -hmm. it's like the further away however the step number one we're doing the similar presentation of the product if we're testing the product if we're yeah. not testing else yeah i mean that that's an important point is that anytime you're you're comparing um images or, or anything really like you need to make sure that they're of, of similar depending on what you're trying to test right like if if you're trying to test um the pen's design and that's the thing that's changing you need to make sure that you know they're in the same context or either they're all on white background or they're all with the same back you can't change up the background because that's going to confuse what people are trying to like pay attention Correct. to so the main thing is think about what you're trying to understand. Um, if, if it is main image composition, then fine, you can change the main image composition, but you should probably, you need to hold the product the same, right? So there's a lot of different, it's, it's the scientific method, right? Like you try to test one thing at a time. Yeah. That's multiple variables. Like you don't know like what, what it was. Correct. Uh, I think one of the last questions I have to you, um, you have different type of audiences, which yeah. helps to us. So, for example, recently we had a uh, we had one avatar of like the customer avatar that was African American religious ladies. Oh wow! And generally speaking, where you can find this audience? And I was asking my team, like, guys, where will we be able to find in pick for this specific audience? Because our product that we developed was yep. super super targeted, and we found that it exists in a pick <laughs> So we found these people and we've been okay. able to test the product and we ran the poll for 100 people, um, 100 responders. So what would be your answer here? Does it make sense to test based on the specific audience inside of the peak full or 50 general responders is enough? Yeah, I always I always recommend people to start with general um, just because I think people have the tendency to be too specific in their targeting. I think in, in a lot of people's minds, like they like, oh, of course this is for women, but then they don't think about the situation where maybe men are buying it for women or vice versa, right? So 
unless you're hundred percent sure, and maybe you can test this or check this in your brand analytics or whatever it is, but unless you're hundred percent sure, I, I would, I would tend to say to go a little bit more general. Um, so maybe general or prime shoppers, those kinds of things. Um, because Amazon is such an open marketplace. Like you really don't know who your audience is going to be. Um, and a lot of times the, the feedback that you're looking for is mostly common sense. I would say in most situations, like the things that are being tested, uh, like anyone can give that feedback. Now, if you're, if you're trying to test like, you know, some benefits of a very particular thing that only, you know, pregnant women can do or something like, you know, can give, then fine. I understand that you like, you would need to use that targeting, but I would say that for most products out there, like a general audience is probably going to do, uh, do the best for you. You can always get more demographic information about the audience. And so we have this other feature where instead of targeting that particular audience, you can, uh, request more information demographic information about the people who do respond. So perhaps you want to uh, allow anyone to respond, but you want to know how many children everyone has. So then when you read through the answers or you can splice the, the data and say like, oh, okay, this, the people who had two children said this, or the people with no children said this. And so that, that's a good way to kind of have, you know, both ways. Um, but yeah, we do have a lot of different targeting. Um, if there's targeting that's not there, like definitely reach out to us. And a lot of, a lot of the ones that we have, have been through customer feedback. So, you know, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you. That's really awesome. And, um, what do you want to say at the end? Like, how do they want them to sign up? How, like, who is your best avatar? Who's supposed to use the peak for and people who do not have used peak ever in their life at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I think people hear about PicFu and they, they're always intimidated about like how to get started. Um, it's, it's free to create an account. Um, we never require a subscription to use the platform. You pay as you go. Um, I would say the easiest poll you can probably do, if, if, assuming you have a listing up, and I think a lot of people will probably have at least a product or a listing up, you can come and do one of the, like, like a crowdsource listing audit. And so what that is, is just running a poll where you pop in your Amazon URL and say, hey, take a look at this listing. What questions do you still have about it? And that's an easy way to just find out if uh, if there are outstanding questions or issues that you think are being answered, but maybe aren't answered very well on your listing. And so like people just, you know, will surface those uh, to you. And so that's an easy way to get started, uh, especially if you don't have variations to test yet. You can just kind of ask these open-ended things. So um, that's what I would recommend. The other recommendation, um, that I, that I like to tell people is that you shouldn't think of PicFu as like a one and done kind of thing. Like we, we try to emphasize that it's something that you should use in your process. So like, as you're creating things, as you're iterating on things, try to get feedback before it's too late. A lot of times people come to us, they're, you know, they're testing out their main image and they're testing it against competitors. And a lot of times the feedback is like, oh, I don't like the product design or your logo is horrible. And it's like, well, it's kind of late now because you just ordered, you know, like 50,000 units of it. Yeah. Maybe if you had tested that small piece of it earlier in the process, like that wouldn't be the feedback all the way at the end. Right. So, you know, um, incorporate PicFu as, as little, as much as you can for, for your budget and just get those, those micro feedback along the decision process, uh, earlier in the process. I totally agree. And I can tell you guys from my end. Ritz Momentum is using peak full on a full speed and a full capacity because we understand every single client we're releasing, uh, we're responsible for their results at some point. And because we have peak full, we have the access to the audience and the audience actually, some of the audiences, Amazon Prime members, and we're running a lot of polls based on Amazon Prime members, making sure those people are ready to buy your products and we're reducing uh, the risk of launch, the risk yep. of uh, lowering conversion, and et cetera, et cetera, just by using Pickful. It's not just, I don't want you to use Pickful because we said so. I want you to use the Pickful be with the purpose to reduce your risk and yep. increase your conversion and your sales. So, Justin, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, and uh, the link to the Pickful actually with a 50% off, I believe, for the first poll, right? Yep. Yeah, it's under this video. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you.